Alright, so we're going to work on this problem from section 14.7, which is about Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So we're looking at 14.89. It's the effect of massage on boxers. So basically we have two uh, columns of data here. We have the blood lactate level, and then we have the perceived recovery from the boxer. And they ask us to do um, some work here in the bottom of this question. So let's take a look at that. It says they want us to rank the values of the 16 lactate levels, then rank the values of the recovery levels, and then from there they want us to use those ranks to come up with the correlation coefficient using Spearman's rank correlation coefficient procedure. And then from there in part D, we're going to run a hypothesis test to determine if the correlation is significant or not. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the levels here. I actually put them in an Excel file so we can um, look at those. So this is the blood lactate level column. This was the perceived recovery column. And I've actually ranked the blood lactate column already for us because it's a little tedious to do the ranking. So just to get through the process a little faster, I did that for us. I'm going to demonstrate how to do the ranking here in case you don't know how to do that or you're rusty on it. So um, generally, ranking is very simple. We just number the values from the smallest to the largest, and we'll number the smallest value 1. So for example, 7 would get rank 1. Now there's another 7 there, but I'm just going to call that rank 2. We'll go back and correct the fact that those are actually two numbers that are the same. So we're going to correct for the ties in a moment. But for now, we'll just say 1, 2 for those. Now, of course, 11 would come next, so that'll be 3. And then 12 is 4. And then we have you know, the other 5 and 6 for the other 12s then 7 for 13. So if you look, these are almost already in order for us, so it makes it nice and easy, right? Um, they're not always that much in order. Usually it's best to sort the list first, but this one is so easy, I'm just going to keep doing that right down the line. Now, you'll notice here that the 20 actually is out of order, though. So it should be 11, 12, then this would be 13. 20 would be 13, actually, right? So, and then 21 would pick up with 14, and then give the next one 15, and this last number would be 16. And that's good because there are 16 values, so we should have 16 ranks at this part of the problem. All right, now from there, what we have to do next is actually look at the ones that are tied, and we have to come up with a tied rank for each of them. So what that means is that, you know, we have this 7 and 7, they're the same number. The ranks should be the same then. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add these two ranks that I gave the 7s, and I'm going to average them basically. So 1 plus 2 gives us 3. If we divide by 2, that'll give us 1 and a half. And so that's what I'm going to give each one. 1 and a half is going to be the rank for 7 from now on. So I've corrected the tie there. Now we also have 12 tied, but 12 is tied three times. So what I would do is I would add these three ranks together and I would average. Well, um, you know, basically when you do that, you're always going to get the middle number as your rank, but here's why. 4 and 6 make 10, and 5 makes 15. So the sum of the three ranks is 15. If you divide by 3, of course you get 5. So I'm going to give each of these 5. So 5, 5, 5. So all the 12s are labeled as 5. Now there's no tie for 13, but there's again three ties for 17. And we already saw that that will end up being just the middle one, since there's three of them. So let's go ahead and call that 9, 9, 9. All right, 18 is tied twice. So when it's tied twice, it's the average of these two. And of course, that'll end up giving us 11 and a half for both of them, right? So we'll do 11.5 and 11.5. And then it looks like 21 is also tied. So we're going to have 14 and 15 average, which is going to give you 14.5 and 14.5. All right, so we've done all of them now. You can see there were quite a lot of ties on this list. Because there are so many ties, we're going to use the full definition of the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. There's sort of a shortcut formula that some people use, but that formula is really suited for when there aren't that many ties. I feel like there's a lot of ties here, so I'm going to go ahead and use the full definition. So let's take these ranks here and let's put, the, put them into a separate column. Or actually, rather than do a separate column, let's go ahead and I'll work with them right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sum them up. So you would do this normally in your calculator, but I'm going to do it faster in Excel. So I'm going to sum up the ranks for this column. So I'm just going to highlight all those numbers and basically tell the computer to add them all up for me. So I'm going to sum that rank column, and then I'm going to sum the same thing over here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sum that column again. So another set of ranks, I'm going to add them all together. So I'll have the sum for the two columns. If you're working with your calculator, you would just add them up yourself, right, with the calculator. So you have these totals, right? 
All right, so now that we've come up with the rank sums, let's go ahead and give them names. I'm going to call this one u, and I'll give this one v. We're just giving them these variable names so that we can keep track of things in the formula that we're going to use. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a column that's going to involve u times u, or we'll call it u squared, and I'm just going to call it u u at the top of the column. Then we're going to need v v, or all the v values squared, right? So v v, or v times v. And then we're going to do the mixed term, that's u times v. So I'm literally going to do for this column, I'm going to do u squared. So 3 squared would give us 9, you know, so on and so forth. What I'm going to do actually to make this faster for us is let Excel do this. You would just do this in your calculator. It's a little bit tedious, but you do that number times itself. And Excel again will do that for us. And I can actually then have it replicate that calculation all the way down. So there that is, right? So we have that done. Now, We'll do the same thing for the VV column. We're going to take all the numbers in the V column and square them as well. And again, to square something, you just multiply it by your, itself. So I'll do this number times itself. Hit Enter. And then I can, again, make Excel replicate that for me very quickly. And then lastly, it's U times V. So this number times this number, right? So I'll have this value times this number here. And then from there, again, I will make Excel replicate that all the way down across. And then we want to add up all these columns, right? We want to sum them. So see how this is summing? If I go just drag this over, it'll actually do the same thing for those other three columns. So there's the sums that we needed. So again, what's the sum here? It's the sum of the UU position. This one will be the sum of the VVs, or the V times V, or V squared. And this will be UV, right? All right. And just to make that look pretty, let's center that. OK, good. So we have everything up and running. We have all our totals that we're going to need. So it's a little bit tedious to do by hand. Hopefully your professor will give you some of that done already for you. But once that material is, is finished, then we can go take that and plug it into the formula. So let's go take a look at that formula and see how it works. All right, so the formulas we need to fill in in order to complete the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient are given here. So there are the formulas. We're going to fill these in, and then we can use those in the actual expression that we're going to have. And that expression is basically this. It's exactly the same, actually, as the expression that we had for the original R. This is R sub S, but the original R we had was very similar. It's just a little bit of notational difference. So if you remember in that formula, it was the sum of squares for the mixed term. In this case, the mixed term for us will be UV. And then it's divided by the square root of the other two terms multiplied under the square root. So SSUU times SSVV. And so that's the expression. So once we have these three quantities, this is very easy to fill in. This is the part that we have to work on, though. All right, so let's go ahead and get these numbers from Excel. So if you remember, we had the, here's our totals, basically. We have all these totals given to us. So we have these three guys, and we have these two. So you might want to take a moment to write these down so that we can use them in the next piece, right? So you're going to write down that UU term. Actually, I'm just going to switch back and forth so you can see where we get them. You don't have to actually write them down. but um, what I need for the first calculation is the mixed term, so that's 1396.25. So 1396.25 minus, and I'll need the product here, u and v. All right, so the sum of the ranks here is 136, sum of the ranks here is 136. And, and by the way, they always have to be the same because they have the same number of values, and the ranks will range from basically 1 to n. And even though we have ties, and so sometimes we, we have some numbers like, you know, 9.5, 5.5, etc., they still will always add up to their rank total. So if you have 16, it's going to be, you know, basically a simple formula, like 16 times 17 divided by 2. That's the formula that gives you this number, 136. So the sum of the ranks here is actually quite easy. You don't even need to add them up, really. You can work it out with a formula. But either way, 136 and 136 is the number we're looking at. And then N in the problem, there are 16 values that we ranked. OK, so you have that formula basically filled in. We'll use the calculator to evaluate it. And we're going to need to complete all these other ones as well. So what's nice about this one is that uh, we just have these two numbers. And this expression for each of them is going to be the same, because in both cases, the sum of the ranks for U and V are both 136. So whether it's UU or VV or U times V, this expression is going to remain the same on the back end. So we just need the V squared and U squared values. So let's get the U squared values. That's 1495. 
and 1490.5 for v squared. So it'd be 1495 and then 1490.5 in these positions. And then this one will still be 136 times 136 over 16. And again, 136 squared or 136 times 136 over 16. Oh yeah, let's work this out with our calculator, see what they come out to be. So the first one will be 1396 0.25 minus 136 times 136 divided by 16. And when you do that, you get 240.25. All right, let's tackle the next one then. So the next one's so similar, I'm just going to, to kind of make it faster. I'm going to bring up what we just had a minute ago. And since the back end is the same for each of these, I'm just going to change the front end here. It'll be 1495. Uh, point 0, 0, just 1495 in other words, right? Minus that expression. And we get 339 for that one. All right, let's do the very last one, the VV one. All right, for that one, we need 1490.5. So again, I'm just going to bring this up again, change the first number. So 1490.50, and then minus the same back end there. We get 334.5, 334.5. Okay, good. So we have our three totals, and now we just plug those numbers into our expression. So SSUV, or the mixed term, is 240.25, and that will be divided by the square root of the product of these two guys, which will be 339 times 334.5, 334.5. Okay, let's see what that gives us with our calculator. 240.25 divided by, and it'll be the square root, so square root of 339 times 334.5. And we get 0.713, 0.713. All right, so that's your Spearman's correlation coefficient for this problem. All right, just to show you very quickly something uh, fast that I want to uh, just demonstrate, which is we have this shortcut formula. So there's another formula in your textbook, you'll notice. It'll say that RS is equal to, and this works when there aren't too many ties. So 6 times the summation of D squared divided by n times n squared minus 1. So this is the formula for the shortcut. Let's work this out. This d squared is the differences of the ranks squared, and then you want to sum them all up. So I'm going to make Excel do that for us, and we're going to compare the answer from this calculation to this one we found here. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So here are my ranks, right? So if I want to come up with the difference of the ranks, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to call this the d column, right? Just the d column. And I'm going to do that by saying, okay, take this rank and subtract away this rank. So I'll press enter and I get my answer and I'm going to drag this down because this will tell me basically what it is for the full column, right? I'm not going to bother getting the sum here. What I'm going to do instead is to get the square of this uh, column. So I'm going to call that the DD column. And then I'm going to basically do that by saying the first number times itself. And this will allow me to drag this down and have all the squares of those differences. So again, what did I do? I got the differences of the ranks and then I squared them. Once I squared them, I'm going to sum them. So I'm going to say equals to the sum of, and I'm going to ask it to sum all of these values for me. Okay, so it tells me 193 is my total. That's the sum of the squared differences. Okay, so let's go and look at our work again and see how what that produces. So with that 193 value, we're going to have 1 minus 6 times. So the sum of the uh, squared differences here is 193. And then divide by n, n was 16, remember, times 16 squared minus 1. All right, let's work that out now with our calculator and see what that gives us. So let's, I'm going to leave this calculation out. This is our old calculation. I want to compare it to the one we're about to do. So we have 1 minus 
then you want to be careful here. Make sure that you um, do this so that you don't make a mistake. So the top is okay the way it is. It's just a product. So we can do 6 times 193. That's fine. When we hit divide by, though, I'm going to put that bottom there in a parenthesis. If I use a parenthesis to start and I do 16 times, then I'm going to put another parenthesis. So this is the inside parenthesis. That'll be 16 squared minus 1. And I'm going to close up the parenthesis. Now that parenthesis is closed. I'm going to close the bigger outside parenthesis for the whole denominator. And this will ensure that I don't have any calculator error. So you can see the answer is very close, but it's not quite the same, right? You get the answer 0 0.716 versus 0 0.713. So the answer is a little bit different. And as I mentioned before, the reason why it's different here is because of the ties. So 0.716 is close, but not quite the same, although it was a lot easier to calculate, as you realize, right? So 0 0.716 is what you get with the shortcut. But remember, that's only what? Approximately the answer, as opposed to this, which is the actual answer. All right, so let's take a look at the next two parts of the problem, and that is basically to come up with a hypothesis test about this correlation coefficient to see if it's statistically significant or not. So what I'm going to do is just take a look at what the question is asking first, and then from there we'll finish that part of the problem. So it says, find the rejection region for a test to determine whether y and x are rank correlated. So it doesn't imply a specific direction for the correlation, does it? It just says that they're correlated as opposed to being not correlated, right? It doesn't say if, test if they're positively correlated. It doesn't say test to see if they're negatively correlated. It just says test to see if they're correlated. So this hypothesis will be basically a null hypothesis of, hey, the correlation coefficient for the population is zero, which implies no correlation, versus HA, which is going to say, of course, the opposite of that, just not equal to zero. Now, of course, they could have implied a direction. They could have said test to see if it's positively correlated, or they could have said negatively correlated, but they didn't say that. It just said correlated, so not equal to zero is all we need to do. Now, the alpha value that they gave us for this problem is 0 0.10, but when it's a two-tailed test, we have to chop that alpha in half, so we're actually going to be using alpha divided by two, and that's going to be 0 0.05. So we're going to have essentially a two sided hypothesis test and essentially if this is where zero would be on the number line to imply no correlation we're going to have sort of a cutoff region on each side uh, well, i'm going to round this off here and shade this and round this and shade this the round it just means not including that particular value but every number after that right and so there's a positive cutoff critical value and a negative cutoff critical value. We have to get that from the table. So we have a little snippet of it in the book. Let's take a look at that. The table requires that we know the n. Remember our n was 16 in this problem, right? So 16 is our n, the number of paired values we had to start with. And then from there, we need our alpha. And we're going to use alpha divided by 2 because it's a two-tailed test. So we're going to use 0.05 with n being 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the table in the book here. Now, it's a little snippet of it is included here in the text, but it's also in the back of the textbook. So uh, it's table 14.12. It's actually uh, table 14 in Appendix A in the textbook. But if you go down to N16, N equals 16, and alpha is 0 0.05, you'll see that we get 0 0.425, 0 0.425 as our critical value. So what they're saying is, is that you have to get to 0.425 on the positive end or negative 0.425 on the negative end to include negative correlation if you're over here, positive correlation if you're over here. So if you look at our 0.713, it clearly lands here in this side of the curve. So we're going to say that we should reject HO and therefore we will support HA. So we're going to conclude based on that that we reject the null hypothesis. We support the alternative hypothesis. And if you're supporting the alternative hypothesis, you're basically saying that there is correlation between these two variables. And the last step of the problem then, of course, is to just uh, discuss the conclusion based on the context of the problem. So 
Let's just go down to the problem here and talk about what's happening. They're massaging boxers, and that, I guess, increases the blood lactate level. And then the boxers report their recovery, or what they believe they recovered. So basically, you know, blood lactate level, as it increases, appears to be associated with a perceived recovery increase. So in other words, boxers perceive that they are more recovered whenever their blood lactate levels are higher. Now, it doesn't mean that one causes the other. Remember, all the rules of correlation still apply here. So we don't know that one causes the other, but we do know that they are associated with one another, or in other words, they appear together. So when the blood lactate level is higher in the body, it seems that the boxers perceive that they are more recovered. And we say more for both of them because we're talking about positive correlation. So as blood lactate level increases, perceived recovery increases. Remember, if it was negative correlation, that would be opposite. As blood lactate levels increased, recovery would decrease. But that's not what we have here. We have a positive correlation. So as blood lactate increases, perceived recovery also increases.